Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Aaron Delvedio, and I'm a Customer Success Technical Manager here at Let's Go Learn. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little bit more about how to get started with Let's Go Learn. So if we can visualize the implementation of Let's Go Learn, we're going to go from a zero to all the way to the time it takes to get students assessed. So overall, as far as a learning objective today, we want to make sure that each one of you today on the call is ready to be able to assess their students um, on day one. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is, like I said, as I said before, my name is Aaron Vergadillo. I've been with Let's Go Learn. This actually makes my seventh year, uh, the seventh school year with Let's Go Learn. However, I've actually been using with Let's Go Learn for a total of nine years because I used Let's Go Learn for two years prior to joining the team. Additionally, on the call today, we also have Alicia Atkinson. Um, Alicia Atkinson will be in the background. And uh, Alicia, would you like to say a few words? Yes, I um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Alicia. I am, also, I am a customer success specialist here at Let's Go Learn. And I will be just helping out with keeping an eye on your questions and uh, interjecting when needed. But I'm going to hand it right back to Erin. Thanks, Alicia. Um, you know, as Alicia mentioned, she will be monitoring the questions. So uh, as a housekeeping item, I just want to let you um, know that all of you are currently on mute. Um, if you would like to ask any questions throughout the um, presentation, feel free to type them in in the GoToMeeting panel on, or to the GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side, and Alicia will interject when appropriate. So without further ado, um, we'll get started. Um, I do want to let you know that this presentation should last no more than 30 minutes. Uh, being cognizant that um, the time as well as today is a Friday. Uh, let's get started, and I want to thank you for your attendance today. So overall, as far as the agenda goes, today we're going to go over a brief introduction about Let's, of Let's Go Learn and learn a little bit more about us. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this PowerPoint deck, so the majority of time we're going to be is inside the learning management system. So we're going to go over how to sign in with Let's Go Learn, we're also going to learn about some useful resources that are available to each one of you so that um, you guys can use the program uh, with Fidelity. And at the very end, we're going to go over a few of the reports that should be ran pro after the students have assessed uh, during that first assessment window. So at Let's Go Learn, we always like to start off with this AI cycle or this AI model. And as educators, all of you have seen it in one form or another throughout you guys' careers. And the A stands for assessment and the I stands for instruction. And at, naturally, you'll notice that there's an arrow going from A to the I. And that just means that the instruction that you plan for students should be based off some sort of assessment that um, you give the students. Now, of course, naturally, the I goes back in today because we want to assess the students at a further time to ensure that what we've done is in fact moving the needle forward. Now, in this cycle, you'll notice the standards are located in the periphery of the cycle or of the model. Now, at Let's Go Learn, we pay attention to the standards. However, we're not blinded by them. So where Let's Go Learn comes in um, and, which, and how we were founded is we were founded as an assessment company. Later, we've added some um, awesome instructional components. But we fit, in, we fit under this diagnostic and informative frame, which kind of brings up the question, what is unique about Let's Go Learn? You know, what do we bring to the table that may be different than other companies out there? And at Let's Go Learn, we answer those why questions. Why are my students struggling? But also, more importantly, why are my students doing so well? Because when you do have a true diagnostic assessment, it should guide the instruction that you give to your students. Now that said, I do want to mention that Let's Go Learn, all of Let's Go Learn's assessments are criterion based. And what that means is that we're looking at the individual skills that are necessary in order for a student to be successful so that you can know exactly the instructional starting point uh, for each individual student. Now, to kind of uh, uh, illustrate the point of the difference between the different kinds of assessments, I want to show you um, as a, a reading assessment, a, a reading example of a standards model of assessment. And when you give us a standards model of assessment, 
for, let's say, a fourth grade student, the information that you get as an educator is that a student is at, above, or below grade level. You know, that information is fantastic, it's great, and it definitely does have its time and its place. However, as educators, sometimes you're, you're lacking those questions of, well, how far above are my students, or better yet, how far below are my students, and where should I start them? Now let's go and we give you that visibility because we use a diagnostic model. And in the diagnostic model, what we do is we change the assessment in real time depending on the strengths and weaknesses of the student. So although you may be giving a reading assessment to a fourth grade student, the, our assessment will intelligently move the assessment depending on the strengths and weaknesses. So you can have a student who's in fourth grade but maybe their vocabulary is in low sixth grade, and maybe their comprehension is in second grade. Once again, we give you that visibility so that you as educators can take those next steps with the students. So at Let's Go Learn, we do offer a wide range of reading assessments. We offer DORA, the Diagnostic Online Reading Assessment, which is a K through 12 assessment. We also offer DORA Spanish, um, and this is meant for um, if you have students who maybe Spanish is their first language, and of course you want to assess what is their uh, level in maybe their native tongue. Fundamentally, you will teach students differently if, um, in, depending on what grade level they are in their native tongue. And finally, for the little ones, pre-K through second, we have DORA phonemic awareness. Now, I would like to preface it that um, the DORA phonemic awareness is typically given to students only after they've taken the, the initial DORA assessment. And from a math standpoint, we have a few different assessments. The first one is ADAM, which stands for Adaptive Diagnostic Assessment of Mathematics. And that is a K through seven measure. And we also have another assessment called DOMA, Diagnostic Online Math Assessment. And we have two variants. We have the pre-algebra and algebra. And as I mentioned before, we do offer uh, differentiated instructions or pretty much custom instructions after the students um, have assessed with us. Now, given my promise, I did say that we don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this PowerPoint deck. However, before we move on, I do have a question or a poll that I want to ask everyone. And I want to launch with and ask everyone, how long has everyone you have been using Let's Go Learn? So, if you're, if you're okay, I'm going to launch this uh, poll so that we can see um, a little bit of information about everyone. Great. So we have uh, the, the, some of the people already have us. Uh, most of you have already answered, so I want to thank you. So we're about halfway there. Um, and we'll wait a few more seconds to allow everyone to answer the question. Thank you so much. All right, so five more seconds and we'll get going. Okay, great. So let me close this and share it with everyone. So in today's session, it looks like the majority of you, 60%, are new, brand new to Let's Go Learn. So uh, we want, wanted to welcome you before we get into the learning management system. And for those of you who have been here for two plus years, uh, I do want to welcome you guys back. And also, I would like to um, interject a few new things that, are, um, that Let's Go Learn has recently announced. And I would like to share that with those, with those for you today. However, um, with all things, I, I hopefully I will still build in some time at the very end in case each one of you has any questions. So let me hide this poll. Perfect. And right, let's get back to our uh, screen. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started at letsgolearn.com. And before I log in to our demo account, I want to quickly go into the student login. Let me log out of my account. There we go. So if we click on student login, this is the page you will get. 
Now you'll notice that this is not a tab environment, nor can you type in another URL on the top of the page. You know, what we try to do here, let's go, we try to minimize as many distractions. However, we all know that um, having a great educator monitoring the students is always key. Now, the last thing that I want to share with you regarding when individual students logging in is this two-minute mouse practice activity. And what we've identified a little over five years ago um, is that some of the students coming to Let's Go Learn, some of them may not be proficient in using a mouse or a trackpad, because nowadays the first computer a student uses is either a tablet or a smartphone. So if you do have little ones, oh, I just got word that I, you can't see my screen. Let me change that up. There we go, screen two. Thanks, Alicia. So uh, once again, uh, this is just a quick uh, mouse practice activity. Um, like I said, some, some of your students uh, may not have the ability to use a mouse or a trackpad, or maybe have weak skills. So if that is the case, feel free to put them on this mouse practice activity so they can learn how to manipulate a mouse or a cursor to move up, down, left, and right and have them, give them the ability to click on the screen. Great, so closing this up. The next thing that, that we'll do is we'll go under the teacher parent login. And this is where we'll spend the majority of our time at this presentation. So before we log in, there are uh, two things that I would like to mention. The first one is the system's normal. So if at any point, it doesn't say systems normal, or if it's either yellow or red, please take a look at it, and um, and please take a look at it, and uh, you'll be able to um, see if maybe you need to postpone the assessments for that day. However, we don't anticipate for it to ever be yellow or red. However, we do recommend for you to check it out. Um, one of the questions that came into the chat is, um, can we use our iPads? And that's a great question. Um, for iPads, um, currently, are the programs that are currently compatible with iPad compatibility are the DORA assessment, which is a Diagnostic Online Region Assessment, as well as the ADAM assessment, and that is our Adaptive Diagnostic Assessment of Mathematics. And just recently, we've uh, launched the EDGE program on the iPad as well, that is also a actually standalone app. So um, thank you for the great question. Now outside of the systems normal, the last thing that I want to mention for those of you who are using computers that are may not be an iPad or tablet is a system check. So if you click on the system check, this is going to launch into our, um, our brand new knowledge base. And if at any point you are experiencing any hiccups with the program, feel free to send over this page over to your um, network techs or your computer techs. And that way they can um, test to see what exactly is going on with your Let's Go implementation as far as a network or as far as the computer. And once again, to get to that page again, you click on the system check on the left-hand side under resources. Okay, great. So finally, I'm actually going to log into the demo account. See if I can talk and type at the same time. Great. So, as an educator, when you log into your Let's Go Learn account, you will always launch to this page. And although most people just go straight into the class tab or straight into the assessment tab, this page offers a lot of fantastic information that you could use for um, yourself as well as the students to make sure that you're implementing Let's Go Learn with fidelity. Now, in the middle of the page, of course, you see all the great Let's Go Learn announcements and some of the recent announcements that we've made about LGL Edge now working on mobile devices, et cetera. The big one that I want to bring to your attention, um, especially if you have little ones as well, is item number seven right at the bottom of the page. 
And the bottom of the page, this will give you the ability to show off the different types of assessments the students will be taking. So for example, if you do want to model um, the assessment to your little ones, make sure to click on the appropriate assessment that you're facilitating. And you can always post it up on, on the whiteboard. And so this will actually uh, show each one of the three interfaces that are, of course, in this situation, located within at, um, the DORA assessment. And you'll have the ability to actually model the assessment. So it's asking me to click on the. So I'm going to click on the. Now, to go to the next step test, on the top of the page, I'll say next step test. So you, once again, so you can see not only the next step test, but also a different interface. So closing that up, uh, once again, to get to that, you go to the bottom of the page, and it's item number seven. Great. Now, on the left-hand side, there are some great resources as well. Under helpful links, the two that I want to bring to your attention are the Professional Development Center, as well as the Virtual Support Tours. If you click on the Virtual Support Tours, what it's going to do is bring you to a series of videos that can help you out with very specific things about Let's Learn. So how to add a student, how to print up logins, et cetera. Now, I would like to mention that these videos are pretty short. They're no more than five to six minutes. And they're here to learn very specific things. Now, in contrast, the Professional Development Center, this page offers not only some great tip sheets, and, but also some great videos to help learn more about Let's Go Learn and also, more importantly, the data. So today, we're doing just getting started. So if at any point you want to go back and kind of revisit what we're going over today, you can watch this video. However, if you do want to get ahead and you already have data in your account, I always recommend this interpreting data um, tab. And here, you can either watch the DORA, DORA interpretation or the math um, data interpretation webinar. And in contrast to the previous one, this, these videos are a little bit longer at 45 minutes a piece. Great. Now, before I go into this teacher toolkit, which is the most important thing on the page, I do want to bring your attention to the top right-hand side, which is the help. Um, inside help, there's two different tabs. There's this request support, which I'm going to open up in a private window, as well as a knowledge base. Now, uh, the, the first one that I want to mention is request support. If at any point you need some, some support, or if you notice something with what's going on that doesn't coincide with what you've seen in the past and you want to put in a ticket, um, please, please put in a ticket this way, because what we do is fill out some information for you already, and more importantly, just create a ticket in our system so that we can resolve your issues in a much faster uh, manner. Now, let's go learn. We definitely understand that uh, no, two, uh, no two people have uh, the different, uh, each people, each person has a different learning style. So instead of videos, if you prefer to read some of the content and look it up, you're more than welcome to go to this knowledge base and look up uh, whatever you need, uh, whatever uh, you need to research a little bit more. It can be on how to add a new student, or it could be uh, information that's a little bit more in depth. So once again, on the top right hand side, you'll find the uh, request support and a knowledge base. And as I mentioned before, I always save the most important things for last before I transition to a new page. And in this case, it's this teacher, um, is this test admin script. I'm located under the teacher toolkit. So prior to the first day and also the day that you're given the assessment, feel free to um, pull up the test script that coincides with the assessment that you're facilitating. And let me bring this up. So not only do we have a script that you can read specifically um, for that individual assessment, but we also have some great tips that will help you not only administer the program, but also administer the program with fidelity. Great. So let me check into the questions before we move to the next tab. 
So overall, uh, Joan, thank you for the uh, great question uh, previously. And then once again, if you do have any further questions, feel free to put those in into the GoToWebinar um, panel. Great. So the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to click on the class tab. And overall, for the first two weeks that your first two to three weeks that you're facilitating the assessment, you will be spending your time inside this class tab. This is essentially your command center for the first weeks when you're administering the assessment. And in this page, the main things that I want to go over are how to add a new student, how to locate the student's information, um, how to add a new class, and also the most important thing is that I'll say for last is how to queue up a student for an assessment. Now, you'll notice that this is a demo account and we do have a lot of students in this account. However, if your account is completely blank, you may need to add students. To do that, we just simply click on Add a New Student. And from here, the only thing that you need to do is fill out the um, information that's on the page. And we have first, last name, date of birth, school student ID. Um, the school ID is very, very important uh, if you do um, utilize it. Um, additionally, you can also assign students to different classes, which we'll be going over on how to add different classes in a few seconds. So after you fill out all this information, all you need to do is simply click on Add a Student. And when you click on Add a Student, it will start adding students into this page. Now, organically, sometimes, if we input students ourselves, we might have some hiccups. So if you need to change a student's name by any chance, let's say Brian. Let's say Brian's name is supposed to be Crook. We locate the student in question with some um, incorrect information, and we're going to click on the edit that corresponds to them. And when you click on this uh, button, we'll be able to change any information. So by mistake, I forgot to put an S. So we're actually going to put crook instead of crook. And we're going to update student. And after we get that success message, we can go back to the class tab. Now we see that Brian's name is now correct. Now uh, let's go learn. Um, of course, there are multiple ways of adding students. So if your site does have more than 100 students, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to our customer support line, and we can actually facilitate a student upload of students. And, of course, if you are a much larger site um, in the thousands, we actually can do um, certain SIS integrations. So once again, if you are curious about those, feel free to reach out to us and we, so we can provide more information. So now we've talked about how to add a student and also two different additional ways to add students by SAS integration and or also upload. Another thing that is typically done with here at Let's Go In is adding new classes. And a lot of teachers will add classes after they analyze the data. So maybe we want to add a class for students who are low in decoding, or maybe you have different sections that you want to break up. If you do want to break up your students into, different, into a different class or add a different class to your uh, into your learning management system, we simply click on Add a New Class on the top left-hand side. And from here, we can add any class that you, you, you need to. So we can say Low Decoding. And we can simply click on Add Class. And just like that, we're able to add a new class. So now, if we want to move students into the class, we can either do so by clicking on the edit, or we can also do that by clicking on add a new student and putting them in right when you add the student. And in a few seconds, I'll actually also show you another way to add students to a class, but that requires to go to a different tab. But we'll do that in a few seconds. Okay, great. So we've gone over on how to add students, how to add classes. And let's let's say hypothetically we um, fast forward to you have your students into your account. So of course, the next thing that we want to do is we want to locate that their, in, their login information so that we can share with them the information 
prior to the first day. Now, you'll notice by default, there is no login information. And let's go and we do this by default uh, for, uh, for security purposes. But if you do want to show the information, you can click, simply click on Show Login Info on the top right-hand side, and you're able to um, share this information with your students. Now, additionally, we do have other ways of pulling down that information by clicking on the print login list on the top right hand side. And at Let's Go In, we have two different formats. We have a list format and we also have a card format. This card format is fantastic uh, for all grade levels. And what, I, what I've seen a lot of great sites do is actually laminate these cards and put a hole punch on the top right hand and put it on a lanyard. Um, that's really great for the, uh, for the little ones. But also, we also have other, uh, other sites just put them into a small box in alphabetical order so they can put this uh, card on their keyboard as you type. You know, as I mentioned before, uh, a great educator at monitoring the, the computer lab is also really necessary. So we also have a list format. If you're like me and you love clipboards, this is a great tool, uh, or this is a great page to print up and put on a clipboard so you can um, circle around the room and help your students as they log into the program. So once again, to get to that page, you simply click on Print Login List on the right-hand side. Now finally, as I mentioned before, and you guys will get tired of me with saying, I say the most important thing for last. And that's setting up an assessment uh, prior to the first day. So we want to make sure we can queue up students for an assessment so that when they do log in, they have the ability to start an assessment. And of course, at Let's Go Learn, there's multiple ways of doing so. The first way that I'll show you is individually. So still picking on Brian, let's say we want to set him up for an assessment. So we locate, once again locate the student in question, and we're going to click on the view queue that corresponds to him. And right now, you'll notice under status, he doesn't have any assessments in queue. So we want to change that. So let's say we want to set up uh, Brian for a reading assessment as well as an Adam assessment. And you'll notice under actions, when I click on that box, it says add assessment to queue. Now, after I've done that, I'm going to click on update queue. So what happens is next time Brian logs in, he will have access to both of those assessments. And going back and clicking on the view queue again, you'll notice that instead of saying um, add assessment to queue, it says remove assessment from queue. So just like that, we can also remove the assessment. So at Let's Go Learn, we don't anticipate you to go student by student to queue up every single student for an assessment. So we have this view class queue. And if you go to view class queue, this will give you the ability to assign an assessment to an entire class. So since I'm currently in the third grade class, I can activate Dora for the entire class, which is really easy to do. Additionally, you can also remove the assessment, which will remove any assessments that are currently um, not started. And we can also terminate the assessment. So although we don't anticipate um, anyone needing to do this, you can terminate an assessment uh, that's currently in progress. So the student is working, and maybe they were accidentally given two assessments. You can actually terminate the assessments as well. And this is a, this is a demo account, so we have the full gambit of assessments um, on this page. However, in your account, you will only have access to the assessments that you purchase. So going once again back to the class tab, we've gone over quite a few things today. And once again, going back to our um, mission or the object, learning objectives today, I want to make sure each one of you is comfortable in going from zero to getting the student success. And we've gone over each individual concept by adding students, showing their login information, and viewing their queue. Um, that way, you can add an assessment to the queue. So those functions will give you each one of you the ability to go from zero to getting the student success. You know, 
as I mentioned before, to kind of touch bases, is there's also one more way that I want to show you how to add students into multiple classes. And as I said before, this requires you to go to a different spot. So moving away from the class tab, I'm going to quickly go under manage, and then I'm going to go to student roster. And what this will do is it will show you all of the students that are currently um, located inside your class. And let's say we need to make a few changes to the student list. So let's say we want to add some of these students to that low decoding section. Or here we go. So we want to add students to that low decoding uh, group. And so all I'm doing is I'm clicking on the white area. I'm looking for a class that I created, and I'm just selecting it. So just like that, we've added three students to a class very quickly. However, um, we know that some of these eighth and ninth graders really are good at decoding. So all I'm going to do is remove them by clicking inside the white box and just pushing backspace. Clicking on the box, backspace. Clicking on the box and backspace. And as I mentioned before, I wanted to show this off just in case if you're trying to analyze data and you need to place students into different groups. So um, I would like to mention that a student can live in multiple classes as well as with multiple teachers. So if you do any kinds of co-teaching, this is fantastic um, because students can live with multiple uh, teachers. Now, the last thing that I want to show you, um, taking into consideration that time frame of getting your students assessed is one specific report that we love to mention. And under, under manage, or pardon me, under reporting, we're going to go to the te to teacher. And the report that we want to run is a teacher assessment completion report. So today I'm actually going to run it for all the students within this um, demo account. I'm going to put an old time frame. And today is the 9th, 15th, 2017. Oh, I changed the wrong one. Zero 09, 2017. 001, 001, 2010. That's good enough. So today, we're going to look at Zora and Adam. And, so, and let me run this report to kind of show you why this is an important report to run at the end of your assessment window. Just pardon me. I think I put in the Let me go back and redo that. I apologize. All students, all students. Looks like we're having a small hiccup. I do apologize for that. Um, I would like to mention that. The, can you do the um, one that actually downloads it so that um, you can download the data? Here, let me let me try that one more time. Since the, since this is an, uh, a lot of the students in this account, um, it is messy data. So. Um, I suspect that might be the issue, but let me try this. Let me try this one more time. I put the day before. Oh, we'll just we'll try this one more time with just the we'll just try it with just the third graders. There we go. So in this page, we have a lot of great information. So not only can we see um, the students who finished the assessment, but also if students are currently in progress or if students are currently uh, just queued up and haven't started, all that information is located on this page. Uh, I do want to mention again that I highly recommend for you to run this report. Um, after you anticipate all the students have already have a test. And so this will give you an idea um, 
probably shouldn't have an assist. So in this page, we notice that Alex Smith, Alex Smith hasn't started or um, doesn't have anything in queue, as well as Sophie. So we want to make sure that we um, reach out to those three students so that they can complete an Atom assessment, the door assessment. Great. So the last thing that I um, that I want to show off is just a brief introduction to the data that's at here at your disposal. And today, I'm just going to quickly go over the DORA data as well as the Atom data. And after that, I will, I will open up the floor to um, answer any questions that you guys may have. So under assessments, I'm going to click on DORA. And when you get to this DORA page, you'll see a lot of information. So I, do, I would like to mention that these numbers represent grade level equivalencies that the students achieved in different functions of grading. The only exception is the PA, which is, this is actually as a percentage. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about each individual column that we offer within DORA, feel free to click on the question mark that's located on the top of the column. And of course, this first one is high frequency words, or as most educators call them, sight words. And this is actually based off the Fry word list. And this will actually give you an idea about what we're assessing, but also does show you the minimum grade as well as the maximum grade. Another great way to see that maximum grade is, is look at for students who have um, scores that are green. These green scores, um, they actually mean that they've actually maxed out. So potentially in the future when, you, when you're assessing your students, and maybe they're in fifth or sixth or and above, you'll see a third grade and you'll actually, instead of saying, oh wow, he's, he or she is low, if they're green, it actually means that they actually received the highest score that they can actually achieve. Now, the one report that I do want to mention today um, that I recommend everyone to run after the students have assessed is the summary, this class, uh, sorry, this display class profile. At Let's Go Learn, what we do is we place students into meaningful groups depending on how they did on the assessment. So we place the students into groups depending on how they do it, on decoding, vocabulary, and comprehension. And we range the students between low or medium and high. If you want to learn a little bit more about this B group, on the left hand side you can click on B and see who falls underneath that category of low decoding and low comprehension. But also more importantly, we also have a fantastic narrative of what it means to be in this group, uh, this profile group, and be in those respective grades. Um, as I mentioned before, if you do want to learn a little bit more about the data, um, you know, this is just a brief introduction. As I mentioned before, please go to the Home tab, and you actually have two options. You can actually go into the Professional Development Center, and uh, one thing that I forgot to mention previously, um, under the Professional Development Center, you also have the ability to see our current webinar schedule. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about um, reading data, feel free to sign up for the, tra the trainings that will be occurring next week. Now, uh, finally, I want to show off really briefly the Atom data. And just like the DORA data, we do have grade level equivalencies as well. Um, however, in, in this case also, we do see some of these numbers are bolded. If you hover above them, what it says is that this, the reason why this number is bold is because the student is 0.25 uh, grade years or grade levels below or more. So since Asia is in second grade and scored a 1.2 in numbers and operations, and that's the reason why the student is, uh, has that number bold. Um, as I mentioned before, so um, Adam is a pretty hefty assessment, and we do offer a lot of great information. So instead of showing you a profile report, I do have something else to show off uh, on the Adam page. So before we go into the, um, the specific profile, I do want to mention that this numbers uh, score is based off of a lot more information. So if we go to right here, this individual tab and click on numbers and operations, now we're able to see that individual components 
of numbers in operation. So here we have numbers, place values, comparing and ordering, addition, subtraction, etc. We go over a lot of content. And another familiar face is that we have those green uh, marks again. So once again, green means that the student received a maximum score. Now, I did promise you an, another report that's amazing to kind of take the next steps with the student. And this is the instructional placement report. So today, I just want to show off fractions. Because fractions is always uh, something that a lot of students struggle with. So being in the numbers and operations and clicking on fractions, I'm going to click on instruction, instructional placement. And we'll leave off with this. So imagine learning fractions as a scope and sequence. And the way to read this report is from the bottom to the top. So we notice that students who are struggling the most are in the bottom. So we have this student, their, their instructional placement is the, their instructional starting point is students will identify fractions using manipulatives as part of a whole. So as soon as this, this student works on that uh, construct, he or will bunny hop to the next one. Students will compare fractions with the same denominator. And as you can already tell from this page, we've already grouped students into a like group. So if this is the beginning of the year, you know that these students, we can all chunk them together and we can actually help have these students possibly help these students down here with some of the, con some of the concepts they're having issues with. And also we notice that some of the students on the top of the page, um, students will order fractions as an instructional starting point. Andrew is one of the most advanced students. So this is a great report to use to break up students into small groups. And as I mentioned before, if you do want to learn a little bit more, check out Professional Development Center or also sign up for one of our webinars that are coming up in two weeks to learn a little bit more about math uh, data interpretation. So as I mentioned before, uh, I'm being cognizant that today is a Friday and uh, it's currently 342 in the West Coast. I would like to conclude this presentation and I do want to thank each one of you for coming along. Um, if you do plan on leaving us today, there will be a brief survey at the very end. Feel free to um, fill out the survey and let us know how we're doing. However, in the meantime, I would like to open it up in case if each one of you has any questions that I may be able to answer today. And the great news is that we do also have Alicia on the line as well. So if there are any questions that you may stump me on, um, I will be able to uh, rely a little bit more on Alicia. So once again, thank you and feel free to ask any questions on the GoToWebinar chat box. However, um, if you do decide to uh, leave us today, I do want to uh, say have a fantastic weekend and I hope and I wish you guys have a great weekend. All right. Bye everyone. So again, feel free to ask any questions in the GoToWebinar chat.